History of the Chichen Itza, Discrepation, Building History, Facts, Nature Geography and Travel Arts. Subscribed by my YouTube channel, Golden Words. Discrepation of Chichen Itza. Yucatan, Mexico, designated a World Heritage Site in 1988. Chichen Itza, ruined ancient Maya city occupying an area of 4 square miles, 10 square kilometers, in south-central Yucatan state, Mexico. It is thought to have been a religious, military, political, and commercial center that at its peak would have been home to 35,000 people. The site first saw settlers in 550, probably drawn there because of the easy access to water in the region via caves and sinkholes in limestone formations, known as cenotes. The History of the Mayan Ruins of Chichen Itza Overview of Chichen Itza, Yucatan, Mexico Chichen Itza is located some 90 miles, 150 kilometers, east-northeast of Uxmal and 75 miles, 120 kilometers, east-southeast of the modern city of Merida. The only source of water in the arid region around the site is from the cenotes. Two big cenotes on the site made it a suitable place for the city and gave it its name, from Chi, Mouths, Chen, Wells, and Itza, the name of the Maya tribe that settled there. Chichen Itza was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1988. Chichen Itza, Chukmul Sculpture Chukmul Sculpture at Chichen Itza, Yucatan, Mexico Chichen was founded about the 6th century CE, presumably by Maya peoples of the Yucatan Peninsula who had occupied the region since the pre-classic or formative period, 1500 BCE-300 CE. The principal early buildings are in an architectural style known as Puk, which shows a number of divergences from the styles of the southern lowlands. These earliest structures are to the south of the main plaza and include the Akabtsib, House of the Dark Writing, the Chichinchab, Red House, the Iglesia, Church, the Casa de las Manas, Nunnery, and the Observatory El Caracol, the Snail. There is evidence that, in the 10th century, after the collapse of the Maya cities of the southern lowlands, Chichen was invaded by foreigners, probably Maya speakers who had been strongly influenced by, and perhaps were under the direction of, the Toltec of central Mexico. These invaders may have been the Itza for whom the site is named. Some authorities, however, believe the Itza arrived 200 to 300 years later. Chichen Itza, El Castillo El Castillo, the castle, Chichen Itza, Yucatan, Mexico. In any event, the invaders were responsible for the construction of such major buildings as El Castillo, the castle, a pyramid that rises 79 feet, 24 meters, above the main plaza. El Castillo has four sides, each with 91 stairs and facing a cardinal direction, including the step on the top platform, these combine for a total of 365 steps, the number of days in the solar year. During the spring and autumnal equinoxes, shadows cast by the setting sun give the appearance of a snake undulating down the stairways. A carving of a plumed serpent at the top of the pyramid is symbolic of Quetzalcoatl, known to the Maya as Kukulkan, one of the major deities of the ancient Mesoamerican pantheon. Excavations within the nine-platform pyramid revealed another, earlier structure containing a red jaguar throne studded with jade. Chichen Itza Black Libal Court. Jaguar Throne Jaguar Throne in the entrance to the lower chamber of the Temple of the Jaguars at Chichen Itza, Yucatan, Mexico. The Ball Court, for playing the game Tlactli. Mayan, Paktapak, is 545 feet, 166 meters, long and 223 feet, 68 meters, wide, the largest such court in the Americas. Six sculpted reliefs run the length of the walls of the court, apparently depicting the victors of the game holding the severed head of a member of the losing team. On the upper platform at one end of the court stands the Temple of the Jaguars, inside of which is a mural showing warriors laying siege to a village. Standing on the platform of the temple to the north of the court, it is possible to hear a whisper from 150 feet, 46 meters, away. Chichen Itza, Temple of the Warriors the Temple of the Warriors, Chichen Itza, Yucatan, Mexico. Other structures include the High Priest's Grave and the Colonnade, 
thousand columns, and the adjoining temple of the warriors. Most of these buildings probably were completed in the early post-classic period, c. 900 to 1200. In the late post-classic period, circa 1200 to 1540, Chichen appears to have been eclipsed by the rise of the city of Mayapan. For a time Chichen Itza joined Ushmal and Mayapan in a political confederacy known as the League of Mayapan. About 1450 the League and the political supremacy of Mayapan dissolved. When the Spanish entered the country in the 16th century, the Maya were living in many small towns, but the major cities, including Chichen, were largely abandoned. Long left to the jungle, Chichen Itza remained sacred to the Maya. Excavation began in the 19th century, and the site became one of Mexico's prime archaeological zones. Chichen Itza, Cenote of Sacrifice the Cenote of Sacrifice is a natural well at Chichen Itza, south-central Yucatan State, Mexico. A legendary tradition at Chichen was the cult of the Cenote, involving human sacrifice to the rain god, Chak, in which victims were thrown into the city's major Cenote, at the northernmost part of the ruin, along with gold and jade ornaments and other valuables. In 1904 Edward Herbert Thompson, an American who had bought the entire site, began dredging the Cenote. His discovery of skeletons and sacrificial objects confirmed the legend. The editors of Encyclopedia Britannica This article was most recently revised and updated by Adam Augustin. Yosemite National Park El Capitan, Left, and Bridal Veil Fall in Yosemite National Park, California World Heritage Site, any of various areas or objects inscribed on the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, World Heritage List. The sites are designated as having outstanding universal value under the Convention Concerning the Protection of the World Cultural and Natural Heritage. This document was adopted by UNESCO in 1972 and formally took effect in 1975 after having been ratified by 20 countries. It provides a framework for international cooperation in preserving and protecting cultural treasures and natural areas throughout the world. Guy Ranger Fjord, Southwestern Norway, example of a natural world heritage site, designated 2005. Aboriginal Rock Painting, Kakadu National Park, Northern Australia, example of a mixed cultural and natural world heritage site, designated 1981, extended 1987, 1992. There are three types of sites, cultural, natural, and mixed. Cultural heritage sites include hundreds of historic buildings and town sites, important archaeological sites, and works of monumental sculpture or painting. Natural heritage sites are restricted to those natural areas that, 1, furnish outstanding examples of Earth's record of life or its geologic processes, 2, provide excellent examples of ongoing ecological and biological evolutionary processes. 3. Contain natural phenomena that are rare, unique, superlative, or of outstanding beauty, or, 4. Furnish habitats for rare or endangered animals or plants or are sites of exceptional biodiversity. Mixed heritage sites contain elements of both natural and cultural significance. The ratio of cultural to natural sites on the World Heritage List is roughly 3 to 1. Several new sites are added to the list at the middle of each year, until 2002, sites were added in December. Aswan, Egypt, Abu Simbel Abu Simbel Archaeological Site, containing two temples built by the Egyptian King Ramses II, reigned 1279-13 BCE, now located in Aswan Mafa, Governor 8, Southern Egypt. On the left is the main temple, dedicated to the sun gods Amonri in Rehorekt, and on the right is the smaller temple dedicated to Nefertari for the worship of the goddess Hathor. Abu Simbel traveled down the Nile to discover important ancient Egyptian cultural sites such as the Pyramids of Giza. A discussion of some of the most important sites associated with ancient Egypt. The primary impetus for the adoption of the World Heritage Convention was the construction of the Aswan High Dam. In 1959 the governments of the United Arab Republic, UAR, now Egypt and Syria, and Sudan turned to UNESCO for help in salvaging the ancient sites and monuments of Egyptian Nubia. 
The sites were threatened with destruction by the Great Lake which would build up behind the new dam at Eswan. UNESCO responded with an appeal to the international community for assistance, and the result was the largest archaeological rescue operation in history. Nubia, ancient region of Nubia. Aerial archaeological surveys were carried out by UNESCO in collaboration with the governments of the UAR and Sudan in 1960. The UNESCO mission in Sudan, while assisting the national expeditions in providing survey data and a photographic laboratory at Wadi Alf, made ground surveys of the many islands of the Second Cataract and of sections of the east and west banks of the Nile River. In addition, the mission recorded and excavated a considerable number of sites. An old kingdom town was discovered at Buhan, providing evidence of a much earlier Egyptian penetration of Kush than was previously believed. The town was preserved and relocated. A chain of Middle Kingdom mud brick fortresses near the Second Cataract received well merited attention but could not be salvaged, because of the nature of their construction. Expeditions uncovered rich remains of Nubian A group and C group people, in the shape of cemeteries and even houses, and much was added to the knowledge of these historically significant cultures. Explorations at Kar Ibrim yielded a splendid array of bronze vessels glassware, ornaments, and iron weapons, as well as large numbers of early manuscripts in Old Nubian, Coptic, and Arabic. A spectacular find was made in the great basilica hidden beneath the mound at Furus West, Pachoraz, where excavators removed and restored over 100 remarkable frescoes. Abu Simbel, Egypt, Great Temple Colossal statues of Ramses II seated at the main entrance to the Great Temple at Abu Simbel, while these efforts represented a remarkable international undertaking, the preservation and relocation of the temples of Nubia posed a challenge of a much greater magnitude. UNESCO's Executive Committee of the International Campaign to Save the Monuments of Nubia undertook a massive fundraising effort, and so generous was the world's response that virtually all the significant temples and shrines of Nubia were preserved. The salvaging of the two rock-cut temples, of Ramses II and Queen Nefertari, at Abu Simbel, posed unprecedented problems. The plan, to remove the overlying sandstone, dissect the temples in the interior of the cliff, and reassemble them on a prepared site on the plateau above, was successfully carried out by late 1967. Covering the temples were concrete domes which in turn would be buried under artificial hills that would reproduce as far as possible the landscape of the original setting. Roman Kiosk, Nile River The Roman Kiosk of Trajan, left, on a Jilkia island in the Nile River, fifteen other temples were salvaged in Egyptian Nubia, including the large Egypto-Roman Temple of Kalabsha, which now stands some 30 miles 50 kilometers, from the place of its foundation. All three 18th dynasty temples of Sudanese Nubia, Semna East, Semna West, and Buhan, were re-erected on the grounds of the new archaeological museum in Khartoum. The removal of Hatshepsut's temple at Buhan exposed, for the first time in 3,500 years, the foundations of the original Middle Kingdom temple beneath. A group of Ptolemaic Roman temples on the island of Philae, downstream of the High Dam, were relocated to the nearby island of Ajilkia in the 1970s. Train Russell The scale of the Nubian rescue operation, the level of international coordination that it entailed, and the obvious benefit to humankind that it yielded led conservationists to conclude that a permanent mechanism to preserve and protect global cultural heritage was needed. American officials Joseph Fisher and Russell Train spearheaded the effort to create such a body, and in 1965 they recommended to the White House Conference on International Cooperation that there be established a trust for the world heritage that would be responsible to the world community for the stimulation of international cooperative efforts to identify, establish, develop, and manage the world's superb natural and scenic areas and historic sites for the present and future benefit of the entire world citizenry. While the recommendation failed to gain traction in the U.S., by 1966 similar initiatives were being proposed by both the International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, and the International Council on Monuments and Sites, ICOMOS. Fisher and Train remained committed to the idea of a single body holding responsibility for both natural and cultural sites. Venice, Grand Canal 
Sculptures at Borobudur, Central Java, Indonesia. In November 1966 a catastrophic flood struck Venice, and the world's attention was once again focused on a threat to its shared heritage. UNESCO and the Italian government embarked on an ambitious multi-year conservation and restoration plan to address the damage, but it was clear that ad hoc responses to such events were far from ideal. At an international conference in Amsterdam in April 1967, Train reiterated his vision of an international cooperative effort that brings together in a unified program a common concern for both man's natural heritage and his cultural heritage, indeed, the works of man are necessarily founded upon and molded by the natural environment. Can we conceive of a Venice in isolation from the sea? Support for a World Heritage Trust continued to build, and in June 1972 delegates at the United Nations Conference on the Human Environment in Stockholm voiced their overwhelming support for such a program. On November 16, 1972, UNESCO adopted the Convention Concerning the Protection of the World Cultural and Natural Heritage. By that time, UNESCO had embarked on yet another ambitious conservation project, this time at the massive Borobudur Monument in Indonesia. Growth of the World Heritage List and Challenges to Preservation Chandelier Romanesque Circular Chandelier Hanging from the Ceiling of the Palatine Chapel in Aachen, Germany The chandelier was a gift from the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick I in the 12th century. Chandelier The World Heritage Convention entered into force on December 17, 1975, and in 1978 the World Heritage List was created. Twelve sites were inscribed to the list in its inaugural year, among them Aachen Cathedral, Germany, the Galapagos Islands, Ecuador, Lanza Ux Meadows, Canada, the rock churches of Lalibela, Ethiopia, the Wyalixka and Bachnia Royal Salt Mines, Poland, and Yellowstone National Park, United States. The list grew rapidly over subsequent decades, and in the 21st century it included over 1,000 properties in more than 165 countries. World heritage designations often boost local economies by encouraging tourism. In addition, UNESCO funds and supervises numerous efforts to preserve and restore sites around the world. Its commitment to conservation and site management for Venice and its lagoon continued well into the 21st century. Sites subject to unusual levels of pollution, natural hazards, or other problems may be placed on the associated list of world heritage in danger until improvements are made. Climate change, urbanization, and natural disasters were a persistent threat to world heritage sites around the globe, and two locations, the Arabian Auric Sanctuary in Oman and the Dresden Elba Valley in Germany, were removed from the world heritage list because of development within the protected areas. Bamiyan, Afghanistan, Buddha Statue Bamiyan, Afghanistan, destroyed Buddha statue Taliban soldiers at the base of the mountain alcove where the taller of the two Buddha statues in Bamiyan, Afghanistan, stood before being destroyed in 2001. The 1954 Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property in the Event of Armed Conflict explicitly forbade the deliberate targeting of culturally significant objects during war, but such malicious destruction often became an end unto itself. During the Bosnian conflict, 1992-95, Bosniak, Bosnian Muslim, cultural objects and historical sites were intentionally destroyed as part of the ethnic cleansing campaign conducted by the Yugoslav and Bosnian Serb armies. In 2001 in Bamiyan, Afghanistan, the Taliban demolished a pair of massive statues of the Buddha as part of their campaign against non-Islamic artifacts. ISIL, World Heritage Site Map of ancient sites threatened by the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant, ISIL. Beginning in 2015, the pace of such destruction accelerated dramatically as the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant, ISIL, also known as ISIS, expanded its sphere of control in the Middle East. ISIL fighters looted what treasures could be sold to support their military campaign, and they destroyed and defaced significant portions of the ancient cities of Nineveh and Hatra in Iraq. The ancient Syrian city of Palmyra suffered perhaps the most extensive damage. In August 2015 the temple of Baal Shaman, dedicated to the Phoenician storm god, was blown up. 
ISIL fighters followed by raising one of Palmyra's largest surviving edifices, the Temple of Bol, as well as the site's iconic monumental arch. Conservationists and scholars with UNESCO and other international groups work to protect and preserve the affected sites even as the battle lines in the Syrian civil war shifted, but they did so at great personal risk. Syrian scholar Khaled al-Assad, who had served as Palmyra's chief archaeologist for 40 years, was publicly beheaded by ISIL for refusing to divulge the location of relics associated with the site. UNESCO Director General Irina Bakova characterized ISIL's actions as a war crime, and she called upon the global community to unite around its shared heritage, saying, We must respond to this criminal chaos that destroys culture with more culture.